I'm delighted to welcome today Judith West from uh, WPA. You're a healthcare partner, Judith, with WPA, so welcome. I am, yes. Yes, this, I'm going into my fifth year now with as a healthcare partner with WPA. Yeah, I really okay. enjoy it. What does WPA stand for? Western Provident Association. Okay. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's an interesting company, actually. It's not for profit. And it started life, interesting about health and medical, started life in 1901 when everybody used to put money into the pot and whoever needed medical attention would take the money out of the pot and use it. Um, and it evolved from there. So things have changed with the advent of the NHS, et cetera, et cetera. But that was the old way that it used to be, you know, if you needed to pay a, a doctor for anything, that's where the money often would come from. Right. For how poorer people. Yeah, how interesting, because yeah. 1901, I mean, it's over 100 years ago now, and I think a lot of um, what's happening today in the world, we're being reminded of how things used to be, and um, there's a lot to be said for technology, but I think there's also a lot to be said for going back to basics. So WPA, Western Provident Association, you said you've been with them for five years. Um, I know from, from speaking off camera um, about your story and, and uh, it's just lovely to see um, somebody who's, who's used adversity to, well, I suppose, create, create an income because now you've, partnered with them you've, you've experienced the benefits so, so talk us through what happened to you Judith and what and what happened um leading up to you joining WPA um well it was a, a lifetime really of um back injury I think probably started off if I'm honest by um childbirth and then I had a riding accident which didn't help and um got lots of different issues with my back and luckily as I was going through this in my early 30s um, I had health insurance in place and one morning in a hotel bedroom in Penrith my back completely collapsed and I ended up spread eagled on the floor of this bathroom really helpless not able to get up anything which makes you humble <laughs> I know um, exactly what you mean I've been there many times with my back as well yeah so um what happened was my then boss um managed to get me in the car on all fours going backwards all the way from Penrith to Leicester we'd run a rung ahead to my consultant who very very quickly got everything in place so literally I was driven down into hospital and onto the operating theatre very quickly. Um, and what had happened was one of the discs in my back had floated free and they were very worried about where it might end up and also the state of my back. So they operated more or less there and then um, and got me sorted out, which is some of the reasons that I do what I do, because without that intervention, God knows what might have happened. The worst case scenario was, you know, it would have gone to my heart and I would have had a heart attack or ended up in a, in a wheelchair. So these days I manage my, uh, my back quite well with osteo osteopath help um, and keep him moving. So yeah, it was, it was great. And it, I will never ever forget that as, as part of you know my life learning about the speed of the treatment which is what what motivates me what gets me out of bed every morning now when I'm talking to people about health insurance. How did you come to work with WPA so um, quite often when I interview people they're a therapist of some sort and they've come to the therapy because they've been cured by it and so on and so forth but I don't think I've come across anybody yet who's actually got a job doing the thing that has helped them so, so <laughs> what happens um so in my life has always been in business development and the majority of it was in outplacement hr consultancy um coaching um working with a big international company and 
Um, I went through succession of different things and then eventually came to the point where I thought, you know what, I really want to do something for myself. Um, and looked around at the marketplace and WPA popped into my inbox. And the, <laughs> the interesting thing was that when I'd been in outplacement, I placed my now regional director at WPA and I'd known WPA through different uh, network events and stuff like that. So I knew about their ethics, their ethos and their not-for-profit status. I uh, rang Phil and I said, what do you think? And he said, yeah, let's talk. <laughs> so it was kind of like meant to be. It was one of those things where you step on to the, to the treadmill, if you like, and you just think, yeah, this is where I was meant to be. Um, and it ticked so many boxes for me with the not-for-profit and the, the ethics and all of that, but mainly because... I just believe in in providing this this service. You know, I think it is so important, and I have to check myself a lot of the time because I get so passionate about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, but I just uh, yeah, it just fits for me, and it, yeah, it, it's interesting. But I think I've learned through my outplacement years when you're looking at your career. It's a good idea to look at where you've been, what your strengths are, what you enjoy, what your passion is, and then go with that in small steps. And that's kind of what I was doing. Although sometimes it's not a conscious thing, is it? You're doing it unconsciously and then you have a revelation afterwards and think, oh, wow. <laughs> and that's kind of how it was for me. It just felt right. So, yeah. I'm, I'm a great believer great believer in what will be will be and when you're in the right space when you're giving out the right energy things come to you don't they things that you never yeah. would have perhaps gone to look for but they just suddenly in your lap and you think wow that's that's amazing so yeah um it's good to hear you talk about passion because when I was a business mentor I would say all the time you know if you're not passionate about what you're do doing forget it because when you when you have those tough times and you need to get yourself out of bed or you need to do something that's maybe not um what you'd you'd like to do unless you've got passion for the thing unless your goal is bigger then you, you know it's going to be hard work and if anything is hard work in my book really don't don't do it there's lots of uh, business coaches and go oh you've got to persevere you've got to work hard you've got to you know tough 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 out there so i'm completely the other ways as, as a it seems you are as well. If something's meant to be, it will happen. And um, all the cogs will go in, in this boat type one, whatever the analogy is, in the right place yeah. at the right time. So they did no, for you. I totally agree with you. And there's, there's a few mantras that I live by. One of them is it's meant to be, it'll happen. Another one is kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And another one is work smart, not hard. So Absolutely. I learned that many years ago um, from a very clever lady. Um, and I was running myself into the ground at the time. I was in my 30s at that sort of time. I've got kids, I've got horses, I've got dogs, I've got, you know, everything going on. And I was literally catching myself coming around the other way. And she sat me down one day and she said, Jude, you're a talented person. Stop working hard, just work smart. Look where your strengths are. Look what you're good at and use those. And that's kind of what I do to this day, whenever possible. There's nothing wrong with a bit of hard work, but, you know, smart behind it makes it even more enjoyable, I think. Indeed. And I think it's about balance, isn't it? Because when, when we are typically in our 30s, by that stage, we've learned a few things. We've, we've you know, been around the block a few times, but it's all about, uh, well, it used to be all about... Um, you know, the bigger house, the faster car, more horses, more this, more that, more everything. Yeah. And and that's the way society has kind of bred us. But I think um, with what's happened in the past year, we're unravelling all of that and actually realising that living simply, living smartly um, is the way to go. I have a, a saying as well, and uh, I'm, I often hear myself saying, the older I get, the less I do, the more I achieve. So yeah. I kind of go with the flow. And um, today, for example, apart from our interview this morning, 
I was supposedly supposedly having a clear day and literally within minutes my diary spilled up um, but it's with things that are a really nice balance for me some things taking me forward some things to relax um, but I've, every day is is just a sheer joy it's, it's wonderful that's nice to hear isn't it and it is possible yeah so, so when you had your horses then and your young children and, and everything where were you living um at that time um leicestershire and then we moved from leicestershire down where i am now in wiltshire with the horses <laughs> you, you and the have, dogs. do you still have horses no i don't i actually became quite sensible about horses um i lost my last one and thought actually i wouldn't don't bounce so well these days mm. and I began to kind of listen to my body more and think, is it really sensible? I, I miss horses and I miss riding to a degree. I miss it on a beautiful spring day like today, you know, being able to get out on top of a horse. But actually, there's other things that have filled my life now. And I've always had that love of horses. They are great teachers. You know, if you're stressed and you get on a horse, like I used to do back then if I was really not in the right frame of mind a horse won't listen to you it'll just go all oh, right well talk to me properly or I'll not listen mm -hmm. so you've got to get into that frame of mind where you're on their wavelength instead of just telling them you've got to ask them in a way that they understand and it really is a leveler and that used to help me a lot with my stress levels at that time. So, yeah, I probably will do something else with horses. Um, <laughs> having injured myself several times with them, though, I've got to say I now find myself with my granddaughter particularly, which has surprised me, not being overly enthusiastic about her riding because... <laughs> because I want to keep her safe, you know, which is a funny turnaround, really. I think it's uh, it's one of the observations that I've made as a grandmother that has quite startled me. But, um, yeah, I love animals. I love horses. I love dogs. We've still got dogs. They still need walking in the countryside. So you still get that, you know, being immersed in nature all the time when you, when you walk in dogs and people. So, yeah. Going back to your back injury, when you um, recovered, I, I presume it was quite a, quite a traumatic time and um, you would have had a lot of rehabilitation to go through. How, yeah. do, how do you stand with regard to medical insurance now because you have an existing condition or has it yeah. kind of gone, gone beyond the sell-by date now? Well, technically now with the underwriting that we have at WPA, it's gone by the sell-by date, as you say. However, at the time that I took out my cover, I did what we call full medical underwriting, so disclosed any pre-existing conditions. Um, but the repair are really good because they don't exclude the whole back. It's literally just the two discs that were affected. So um, yeah, it does it does make it an issue, but. Um, I think by the time you get to, to my age, you're going to have pre-existing conditions of some sort. Um, so, yeah, it's just a question of how it's done, really. So with the um, collapse, pretty much, of the National Health Service, which has been on the cards for years, yeah. um, how, how would you recommend people go forward now? Because um, not everybody can afford private health care. And one of the... The reasons why I was happy to talk to you is because from my own experience, I know that WPA is far more affordable than some of the other big companies. Um, so how, how does that how does it um, compare price wise? And what would you recommend? How, how do you recommend people start with with WPA? Um, the, what you find with WPA, they have um, offers that come on every now and again we're just now coming to the end of partner goes free offer so that means that for a say for a couple or a family 
the younger partner of the two goes free for the first year. So that's a great way to start and it's really cost effective. Um, sometimes it's worth looking at cash plans because that's money back on everyday expenses like dental, optical, health assessments, um, all such things which can ease the burden of you know, medical expenses. But the wonderful thing about WPA is we've got something called shared responsibility. So we don't have um, no claims discounts because that discourages people from claiming and we want them to claim. So shared responsibility gives us a gearing mechanism so we can really keep the prices where we want to and affordable. Um, it's a much fairer way of, of quoting and, and providing a premium for people that they feel comfortable with. Can you just explain a bit more on that shared responsibility? Yeah, so say for example we had a shared responsibility on a policy of £250. So everybody, a, a, a policy holder would have from zero to £250 to claim, they would be able to claim and WPA compensate them by 75% of the claim and they um, contribute 25% of the claim. And then when they've had 250 pounds, the claim limit, we pay, WPA pay 100% of any claims. So it works in three ways. The first way is to keep premiums at a level. It gives us a gearing mechanism to keep premiums down. Secondly, and probably most importantly, really, is it encourages our customers to claim. And yes, we are an insurance company. <laughs> and thirdly, if something really disastrous happens, which God forbid, we don't want that, obviously none of us. But if it does, WPA are going to step up and, and um, pay 100% of claims, which gives you real peace of mind if you've got something that's gone you know, pretty badly wrong with you and you need you need that peace of mind. So it works in those three ways and it really demonstrates the ethics and the way that we work, I think, um, very well. Wonderful. Has, has it stayed the same under the same ownership? I know as you mentioned it's a not for, for, for can't speak straight, not for profit. Um, has it stayed under the same management sort of ethics and all the rest of it since 1901? Yes, very much so. Um, it's not family owned, it's run by trustees. Um, but we've had a CEO for a very long time. He was in, he was in position for about 30 odd years, wow. maybe even more than that. And that gave real stability to our ethics and our beliefs and the way that we did things. We've now got a new CEO um, and he's come along but he's been under the tutelage of the old CEO for a long time. He's bringing new, really great ideas in and bringing us in into this century with technology and stuff, which is great, but we've still got those ethics. But, and they are old fashioned, you know? I don't mind saying that because they value people. We are putting customers first. And, you know, if my customer retention drops below a certain level, that's what we're worried about, not the profitability of the customers coming in. So we're aiming to break even with claims going out and premiums coming in, which is a very interesting way of being. And it's taken me a while to get used to, and it's well worth doing. You know, I'm seeing a lot of more ethical businesses now asking me about this because I, I see that this will be the way forward in the future. You know, instead of being driven by profit, it's about a little bit, I guess, like the Waitrose model potentially, where everybody's involved in the business and involved in the profit making and gets gets a share of that. We don't work like that quite, but it's a similar sort of model. Yes, yeah, that's refreshing to hear, Judith, because in fact that that that's how I I work. Um, I don't go out of my way to um, the work that I do with um, with health and well-being I have a, a system where I have two um, two laboratory tests that come home to people uh, one is a dry blood analysis finger prick dry blood analysis the other is a, a hair tissue mineral analysis 
And those two tell us exactly what's going on currently within the body. And we can physically see with reports and microscopic detail and charts and all sorts of things. So we can see what's going on. Um, the other two assessments are a, a metabolic uh, analysis, which is um, an online assessment. It's a detailed questionnaire, but it also looks at things like your blood pressure, your pH level readings, your cholesterol, you know, your, your sugar, et cetera. Um, and the other is the behavioural profile, which is my core expertise, which I've been doing over 25 years. But I've been mentoring people now for I don't know how long, and I've been doing it mostly on a voluntary basis. But now I've introduced the laboratory test, so I have to take a charge. So I've tried to I've tried to do it in a way that seems to be working, um, so that I'm not I'm actually not making a profit. I'm just I'm just <laughs> breaking even, and that's yeah. that's. That, that's music to my ears and I looked at my my books yesterday actually and you know I mean it's it's the first time it's ever come this close but I was a pound I, I made a pound loss actually last month but that's that's fine <laughs> um, but I thought how how lovely is that and I was just so you know I was like I feel really smug about it because that's exactly you know I'm walking my talk and I can demonstrate it and it's not about profit it's about helping people and we've all got, you know, knowledge and tools and resources and things that we can help people. And it's just a really nice, uh, it's a really nice thing to have a conversation with a business that has those same ethics. And I think we're going to see more and more of this, as, as, as you said. I think it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, I hope so. And it's also lovely to hear about this um, CEO that's been there 30, um, 30 years. I mean, that's remarkable, absolutely remarkable. And then the next one in line was his his student. Yeah, it just I'm happened honest. really quietly. You know, one day he was there and the next day he was gone. And very, very quietly, given the amount of work and, you know, passion that he put into the business. But he he was really quiet about it, just very quietly said goodbye and, handed over <laughs> wonderful and, and and that says a lot about ego doesn't it so many businesses and um individuals are, are driven by ego but it's about it's not about ego and you and you and i or you know whatever it's it's about helping people and yeah you know, we all help ourselves in, in that as well so helping ourselves and then helping the next person and then them helping the next person and so it goes on so the old-fashioned values i think um they say um, it takes a community to raise a child. And I think we're going back to those days. And I do hope we see more of that uh, demonstrated in life generally. I'm over here in Portugal, yeah. we're actually building communities. Um, when I came out here a year ago, it was to help my friend with some uh, various projects. And through what's happened in the last year, we've always had um, through and through us um, a philanthropic type of approach to everything that we do particularly with young people but it's now the barometer has kind of switched even further over towards young people because so few of them have got opportunities now because of what's happened in the last year so um, we've decided that we're actually going to invest in some more land and create another community so where people can live and share and you know we can we can live by those old-fashioned values live very simply and um it's it's wonderful so i'm in portugal you're in wiltshire um which i know fondly because i i live there when i when i go back to the uk i live between wiltshire and uh, nottingham so um although at the moment i can't see me going back because you know my life's here now and which which is wonderful yeah. so um does wpa go overseas or is it purely in the uk no it is just uk we will insure people for overseas emergency treatment on policies but no we can't insure in in other countries and i, I can't see that changing immediately really it's it's there's only one or two insurance companies that will actually insure abroad what my findings are that each country, even in the EU, have got different ways of, of managing the health service. Um, and some health services are great. Like my my sister-in-law lives in France and she has had cancer and her treatment has been ex really good, really good. Um, but other countries are different. And so it's better really to investigate what you've got within the country that you live in really I think would be my advice.
Absolutely. And it keeps it to your kiss, you know, keep it simple, stupid, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix it, you know. That's exactly. Another uh, uh, saying there. Well, it's been lovely speaking with you, Judith, and um, learning about uh, a bit more about WPA and um, your, your situation as well. So how can people contact you if they'd like to know more information? Sure. Um, they're very welcome to. I'm on um, LinkedIn. Even sorry. Um, my telephone number is oh seven nine six eight oh seven eight five three eight, and my email address is Judith dot West at hcp hyphen plc dot org dot uk, and um, the WPA um website is there wpa.org.uk forward slash j west so they can have a real good look at wpa but i'm really happy to help anybody with advice or you know guidance on not just wpa wpa but any any kind of questions about health insurance or my story or you know whatever if i can help i will Wonderful. Can you just repeat your phone number again, please, Judith? Yes, 07968078538. And your email? Judith.west at hcp plc.org.uk. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Judith. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Okay. And review. Thank you.